Hi. We want to talk today about parts of speech. I'm sure you um, ha know these parts of speech, or you know most of them. And uh, but what we want to do is we want to look at them again and uh, remind ourselves what these different parts of speech are. Now, parts of speech are not very important uh, of themselves, but they are a very important step that we need to take in this class in order to get to our goal. And our goal is to be able to look at a group of words, any group of words, and decide whether the group of words is a correctly written sentence. Decide whether a group of words is a correctly structured, well-written sentence. Uh, and if it's not, if it's not a correctly structured sentence, what we want to know is how to fix it. So that's our goal. Uh, the first step we want to take towards building a language that we can use to talk about whether groups of words are correctly written sentences is to be able to identify parts of speech, what part of speech a word is in a sentence. Um, so what we want to do is um, remind ourselves what these are, and then we'll try some examples. All right. Okay, so our first, um, the first part of speech that we want to look at is here. It is um, a noun. We want to think about what a noun is. And um, a noun is very simple. It's a person, a place, or a thing. Sometimes people say a person, place, thing, or idea. But I think ideas are kind of things, right? An idea is a thing. So uh, I think it's just as simple to say a person, place, or thing. Now, so look at some of these examples. People, places, or things. Susie is a person, right? So that's a noun. Susie is a noun. Mother is a person. So mother is a noun. Market is a place or it's a thing. So that's a noun, right? School is a place or it's a thing. So that's a noun. A cat is a thing or a person maybe. <laughs> so that's a noun. A car is a thing. So that's a noun. Love is a thing. It's a feeling, right? So it's a noun. So nouns are people, places, or things. All right. So the next thing we want to look at here is a pronoun. Notice that pronoun has the word noun in it, right? So pro is a Greek or Latin root that means uh, for. For. It means the same thing as for or in the place of um for or in place of. And uh, so a pronoun takes the place of, sorry, for means for or in place of. So a pronoun takes the place of a noun. It's, it t stands for a noun. So we know some, com there are many, many different kinds of pronouns. But some of the most common kinds of pronouns are words like I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Uh, if, for example, I said um, uh, Sandy uh, went uh, to school, uh, but, but she was tired. Okay, Sandy went to school, but she was tired. So here we have Sandy, right? Sandy is doing something. I could say Sandy went to school, but Sandy was tired, right? So, but that would sound repetitive, wouldn't it? It would sound like I'm repeating myself, and we don't want to, um, we don't want to sound repetitive if we can help it. So what we do instead is we use a pronoun instead to take the place of the, um, the noun. 
that we don't want to repeat. We use a pronoun, she. Okay? So pronouns take the place of nouns, and we use them to avoid repetition. Uh, okay, and then one more, and we'll practice a couple. The next part of speech we want to talk about is a verb. Verbs. Verbs are action words. Real easy to think of verbs as action words. Words like run. Running is an action. Eating is an action, right? Um, reading is an action. I read. It's something I do. But there are also some kinds of um, verbs that aren't actions. They're weird. They're called state of being verbs. And a state of being verb is like, it's like saying a state of existing. Something exists. Something is in the world, right? So I am. I exist, right? You are. You exist. He is. He exists. He was. He existed. We were. We existed. So even though these don't feel very much like actions, they are still verbs, and they're very important verbs. Okay, so let's go down here to a couple of uh, examples and see what we can see. All right, so here we have number one, number one here. We have a group of words, a group of words. We don't know if it's a sentence, correctly written sentence, or not. We just know that it's a group of words, right? And so um, what we want to do is we want to find the nouns or pronouns or verbs in this group of words. So we're looking for people, places, or things. People, places, or things. So is small a thing? Can I say, here's a small? I picked up the small. No, small is not a thing. But a girl is a person, right? So girl is a noun. Let's see if I can write an end there. OK. So what other people, places, or things do we see? Here's a movie. A movie is a thing. Now, if we're trying to figure out whether a word is a um, whether a word is a noun, sometimes it's helpful, not always, but sometimes it's helpful to try to put the in front of it or a in front of it to see if by any chance it might be a noun. So if I say, I could say the movie or a movie, right? I could say the girl or a girl. That would make sense. So it could be that in this sentence, those words are nouns. Now, they wouldn't be nouns in all sentences. And a word is different parts of speech in different sentences, depending on how it's used in different sentences. We'll see more about that in a little bit. But I couldn't say the and. That doesn't make sense, right? I couldn't say the watched or a watched. That wouldn't make sense. I couldn't say the long or a long, right? So I could say a long movie, but then it would be movie that's the noun, not long. All right, so we have at least two nouns here. And we also have one pronoun here, she. She is a pronoun. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to write a P. There we go. So she is a pronoun. So we found two nouns and a pronoun in this sentence. All right? OK, now. Um, Let's go back up here. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that in a sentence like this, movie is a noun. 
In a different sentence, movie might not be a noun. We'll see some examples later on. It might be a different part of speech. Okay, so let's, um, oh, let's look for verbs, sorry. Okay, so the easiest way to find a verb is first to find a noun and then ask ourselves, is the noun doing something? Did this girl do something in this sentence? She did, didn't she? She sat. So sat is a verb. Okay, and what did she do? Did this pronoun do something? She what? She watched. So watch is a verb in this sentence, right? Did the movie do something in the sentence? The movie what? No. So movie is a noun, but there's no verb that goes with it, right? So we found the nouns and pronouns and verbs here, right? Okay. Now let's go back up to the top here and think about um, at the next two kinds of parts of speech, the next two parts of speech, adjectives and adverbs. Now these two parts of speech, these are describing words, describing words. Um, we can say, uh, sorry, describing words. These are describing words. So they describe. We say they modify other words, but it means the same thing as they describe other words. So adjectives describe nouns, and adverbs describe verbs. All right? So uh, if I have, for example, uh, a baby, Baby is a person, so that would be a noun, right? If I say the plump baby, plump describes the baby. It tells me something about the baby. So if I have a car, a car is a thing, right? Car is a thing. If I say the fast car, fast is describing the car. It's telling me something about the car. If I say, um, a flower, a flower is a thing, so it would be a noun. If I said the blue flower, blue would be describing the flower. Numbers, for example, are always adjectives. So if we say, um, I had, uh, uh, let's see, if I had cookie, a cookie is a noun, it's a thing. If I have two cookies, two tells me about cookies. So numbers are always adjectives. We'll come back later and talk about this noun, about possessive pronouns. But first, let's talk about adverbs. It's easy to remember which of these is which. Adjectives describe nouns. Adverbs describe verbs because it's got the word verb in there, right? So uh, adverbs describe or modify verbs. And they very often, very often, not always, but very often, they end in L-Y. Okay, so if I have a verb like uh, I run, run is an action. How do I run? I run quickly. Quickly tells me how I run. So it's describing the word quickly is describing or modifying a verb. Run is the verb. Quickly tells me how the verb happens. I walked. How did I walk? Tiredly. I thought. How did I think? thought? How did I think? <laughs> Creatively, right? Um, the car rolled down the driveway. How did it roll? It rolled slowly. All right, so let's go down here and see if we have any adjectives or adverbs here. So if I have, um, look at the nouns. I have girl and I have movie. So is there any word here that tells me about girl? Girl, what kind of girl? A small girl, right? So small is an adjective. Small is an adjective here. 
So nothing might have, nothing telling me about she. What other nouns? I have movie. Is there a word here telling me about what kind of movie? Yes, it's a long movie. So long is an adjective. Okay. Now, so what about adverbs? Look at the verbs. Here's a verb. Here's a verb. Any words telling us about those verbs? How did the girl sit? She sat quietly, right? So quietly is an adverb. It's a word that is describing a, it's describing a verb. So quietly is telling me how the girl sat, right? Small is describing the noun, the girl, right? Okay, quietly is telling me how the verb happened. Another verb, do we know how she watched? She intently watched. She carefully watched. No, there's no adverb here telling us how she watched. Okay, so we've found our nouns, verbs, a pronoun in there. We found adjectives and adverbs. So let's go back up here and think about a couple of other um, things. Before we do, um, let me just say something about possessive pronouns first. Possessive pronouns are sort of weird items because they are pronouns, right? They take the place of nouns, but they don't really act like nouns. They really act like adjectives. So what if I say, for example, um, he picked up his book. He picked up his book. Well, he, that's a pronoun. There's some noun back here that it's taking the place of. And his is also a pronoun. It's a possessive pronoun. It shows something belongs. But here, it's really telling me something about the book. The book. What kind of book? His book, right? So book is a noun, and his is telling me what kind of book. His book. I can't get the little arrow thing. Anyway, the book belongs to him. So this possessive pronoun, my, mine, yours, yours, his, hers, it's, theirs, they are pronouns, but they really act more like adjectives. They really act more like describing nouns, like they're describing nouns. Okay? All right. Then a couple more parts of speech. Conjunctions are an important part of speech that we're going to think about. The word con is a Greek or Latin root that means with or together. with or together. And junk, J-U-N-C, is a Latin root that means join. It means join or connect. Join or connect. So a conjunction joins or connects things together. So conjunctions join words or phrases or clauses together. And some of the most um, common conjunctions are called coordinating conjunctions. And coordinating conjunctions, sorry, coordinating conjunctions um, are words like Let's see if I can get this up here. Coordinating conjunctions are, there are only seven in English. Um, they are for, um, and, but, I mean, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So these are 
the seven, only seven coordinating conjunctions in English. We sometimes think of these, um, we sometimes use a memory trick to remember these. Uh, we call them um, fanboys because look at the beginning letters of these words. It's for um, and nor, but, or, yet, or so, fanboys. So we can use the term fanboys to remember the seven coordinating conjunctions in English. All right, and they join things together. Now, down here, if we look down here, we have one of these fanboys right here. So this is a conjunction in this sentence. Um, we have one conjunction here. All right. That's the only one of these fanboys that we see in this sentence. And the next part of speech we want to think of is an article. Articles are really easy because there are only three in English. A, an, as in A with a vowel after it, and the. Those are all the articles in English. So right here, here we have an article, right? And here we have an article, yeah? So we have two articles in this sentence. And the last thing we're going to talk about is prepositions. But we're going to talk about those separately because prepositions are very, very difficult part of speech. Um, there are dozens and dozens of them, so we can't just memorize them easily like articles or conjunctions. And there isn't a really good definition for them. So it's kind of hard to, uh, there's not a simple definition like there is for nouns, a person, place, or thing. So we're going to talk about those separately. But look what we did here. We identified all of the, um, all of the different parts of speech in this sentence, didn't we? We identified, let's put article over here, and let's put, um, article here. So we identified all of the parts of speech here. Article, adjective, noun, verb, adverb, conjunction, pronoun, verb, article, adjective, noun. So we identified all, all of the parts of speech in this sentence. Right? Okay. So we're going to try um, Let's see, let's try one more example here, and then you can try some examples uh, on your own. So, let's try number two. Here's a group of words. Here's a group of words. We want to figure out what part of speech each of these words is, okay? So, um, first, let's take a look and find some nouns. Let's find some people, places, or things here. So, what people, places, or things do we have here? Okay, so a clock is a thing, right? So, that's a noun. A clock is a, a thing. Sorry. Is a thing. Now, here's a, here's what I wanted to mention before. An alarm. I could say the alarm or an alarm. It looks like it could be a noun, but when we see two nouns next to one another, one of them is likely to be acting like an adjective. One of them is likely to be describing the other one. Usually the first one is describing the second one. All right, so in this sentence, 
alarm isn't a thing. Clock is a thing, but alarm is telling us what kind of clock. So in this sentence, alarm is going to be describing what kind of clock. So it's really going to be acting like an adjective. Now in another sentence, alarm might be a noun. What if I said, um, uh, what if I said, the, the alarm in the building rang loudly. The alarm in the building rang loudly. In that sentence, alarm would be a thing, the alarm. Alarm did something here. So in this sentence, alarm is a noun. In this sentence, alarm is an adjective. So words can be different parts of speech depending upon how they're used in a sentence. All right, let's see if we have some other, no other people, places, or things here. But we do have a pronoun here. We have a pronoun. Um, they is a pronoun. Sorry about that. Okay. So they is a pronoun. Yeah. Okay. So now we found our nouns and pronouns. Let's look for verbs next. Action words. So look at these nouns and see if they're doing something. The clock buzzed. The clock buzzed. So that's a verb, right? Well, instead of the other way, I'll do it this way. And did they do something? Is there an action they did? They slept. So that's a verb. Yeah. So we found the nouns and verbs in this sentence. Let's see if we can next look for adjectives or adverbs. Adjectives describing nouns, adverbs describing verbs. So, let's see. Um, where's that going to go if I do that? Okay, so let's bring this up here. So is there a word here that tells us about, that describes the clock? Yes, we saw this. This is an adjective because it's describing the clock, right? What kind of clock? An alarm clock. Yes? All right, so nothing modifying or changing this. Now let's look for adverbs. Anything that tells us about the verbs. How did the clock buzz? Loudly, quietly, suddenly? No, no word telling us how it buzzed. Look at the other verb. How did they sleep? They slept soundly, right? So this is an adjective, I mean an adverb. An adverb. How did they sleep? Soundly. Yeah? Okay, so we found nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Let's look for these last three. Any conjunctions? Any fanboys in this sentence? For, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so? Yes, we have but. That's a conjunction. Right? So let me write that in. That's a conjunction. Oops. There's a conjunction. Any articles? Here's an article. The. No A's or ands. Okay. And now, what do we have left over? We've got this, 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 this. We have this left over. So what's old doing here? Old is telling us what kind of clock. 
right? So it's also an adjective. Can we have two adjectives telling us about the same word? Yes, of course we can. Two adjectives both telling us about somehow I can't get. So this is an adjective and this is an adjective. They're both adjectives. Yeah? Okay. Two adjectives. Yes. It's an old clock. It's an alarm clock. So they're both telling us about the clock. So they're both adjectives. So we have article, adjective, adjective, noun, verb, conjunction, pronoun, verb, adverb. And we identify all of the all of the different parts of speech. So there are some other sentences. Here's another example that you can use here, already labeled. And you can take a look at these other sentences, if you like, and see if you can um, uh, see if you can uh, figure out the parts of speech. This handout will be in the file section of our Canvas class for writing one. You can get this handout there to review or to use as you like. All right. All right. Well, thank you for your attention, and uh, I'll see you next time.